Good evening. It's 631. Let's get this meeting to order so Kay can go home early. A roll call, please. Patterson? Here. Petrie? Present. Rector? Here. Rosales? Here. Store? Here. Summers? Here. Tinsley? Uh, Anderson? Clemens? Clifford? Here. Cowart? Here. Cruz? Esri? Here. Furtado? Here. Goss? Here. Harper? Hartke? King? Marsh? Here. McGuire? Mitchell? And Weibel? Present. We have a quorum. Uh, seek approval of the agenda and the addenda. So moved. Moved by Mr. Mr. Rosales. Or a second? Second by Mr. Uh, Patterson. A couple of uh, changes here. The closed session is going to occur after item uh, number 9A2 in finance. We're going to move the closed session there. This will be under 9A2. And a couple of typos that I'm responsible for. Uh, under the appointments, bottom of the first page to, for the Philo Fire Protection District, it's it's Michael, not Michelle McHenry. And on the next page, under Fountainhead Drainage District, Gerald Reefstick, I'd love to appoint him to, 20, to 2031, but it's only to 2018. And finally, on the same page, under, the, under finance, the first item, A1, the correct address is uh, 504 South Dodson, not 504 SA. Okay, any other changes to the agenda? See none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Can I ask a question about the agenda? You're a little late, Mr. Patterson, but go ahead. <laughs> For uh, 9A2, did you say something? 9A2, what about? 9A1. I'm sorry? Did you, did you make reference to the finance? Anything changing? Or you just just we're putting a closed session right after number two. Oh, okay. All right, let's move on to approve of the minutes for March 13th. March 13, 2018. Is there a motion to approve? Approved by Esri. Second. Second. By Mr. Rosales. Discussion of the minutes. Good point. Well, Ms. Peach is correct. Let's go back to the motion to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Then we, if we did it, we did it twice. Okay. Let's go back to the approval of the minutes. Uh, can we go with a motion by Esri again and then a second by Rosales, correct? Yes. Okay, that motion is on the floor. Discussion? See none. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. Public participation. Are there any members of the public which wish to speak today? It's a, apparently not. Okay, let's move on to, move on to communications. Uh, any communications? Uh, I have one. I just got a cold an hour ago, so I'm sort of crabby. Just want to point that out. If I don't look happy, I'm not. All right. Um, let's move on to justice and social services. Mr. King. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, what we have before us is the uh, come back before you all with the Racial Justice Task Force Community Engagement Recommendation. This one has been modified a bit, uh, and I'll read the recommendation. Uh, recommendation that the county board facilitate the collection of racial ethnicity data within the county criminal justice system, cooperate with other local government entities in sharing data and utilizing compatible software so that the data can be used in a community community wide portal. And so uh, asking for a motion for that. Uh, Ms. Ms. Cower first and second by Mr. Harkey. Uh, discussion. Yes, Ms. Petrie. Uh, yes, um, I haven't picked out where is the best spot for this, so somebody might suggest, but I do think <laughs> besides uh, the cooperation with other local governments and agencies to collect an archive, et cetera, et cetera, that it does need to be uh, mentioned that sharing, if there's of any cost that might 
come up to accomplish. And I'm looking at 3E as the possible place for that. I do think this is not just on the county, the county can take the lead, but there's so many other agencies that are involved, the cities, the police departments, on and on and on, that um, they need to have a buy-in. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beecher. Any other discussion? Yes, Mr. Rector. Are there any dollars attached to this? N not at this time. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to it by any means, but when you start talking about software and integration and co collaboration, I'm just... We'll have yeah. to come back for a recommendation for specifics on software or, you know, any time, time we come up with a recommendation for that. Well, there'll probably be a dollar amount attached to it at that point. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mr. Mr. McGuire. Uh, thank you. Um, and I, I don't have a, an issue with a, a lot of this, and I, and I think there's a lot of good things here, um, but I think there's um, other organizations that work throughout the county, reentry and um, um, community coalition. Um, I don't know that you know, you're just listing some of the other organizations, cities, uh, the sheriff's office, you're, they're, they're, we're not specific enough yet in the information that's here for me to be supportive. Um, and I don't know of what platform we're gonna use, how much those things will cost. Uh, I think we really need buy-in from some of these people before we start trying to formulate this stuff. And I don't think we as the county should be the organization that is driving this. I, I think we're kind of the tail end of the, of the, um, of, of the org, of, of what happens mm -hmm. in, in collecting this data. I think the cities really have the greater population of the people that are picked up and brought to our jail, and we can't tell the sheriff what to do. We can't tell the cities what to do to collect this data. Um, while I want to be involved in it, and I want to see it move forward. Um, we really don't have the money to do it. I'm not sure when we'll have the money to do it, so I won't be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Guire. Mr. Arkey? Yeah, as I think was mentioned before, there's no money attached to this. What this is is a call to action, is asking, directing the county to work with these groups, and it's exactly what people seem to be expressing their concerns about, to go out to find, figure out what we need to do, what is going to be the data we need to collect, can the cities of Champaign and Urbana and Rantoul share the cost, not only the costs, but, but the, you know, how we collect this data and get it to us. And, you know, we ultimately are where all these people end up with the jail and the criminal justice system. So we kind of are the stopgap, gap and there's nothing wrong with being a leader. So I'll be very supportive of this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Mr. Price. Well, I'm the one who actually put this recommendation together. It does not say we're going to be the leader. It says we're going to facilitate. We're going to help. It doesn't say we're leading. There's no money involved. We're going to cooperate. We're going to, we're going to help and cooperate. That's all we're going to do. Mm -hmm. There's no money involved at all. And I will support this. Yep, Mr. Esri. Thank you. Um, I guess I just have a question on just looking through, like 1A, where it mentions the county board meetings, hosting them at various locations. I know Mr. Weibel brought it up, and I even was kind of questioning this myself before even Mr. Weibel did, the idea of recording abilities at other places. And I also had the, not, not that you can't, you can work around it potentially. I mean, it's not very easy, but there's also issues. I mean, and this can be taken care of too, but there's also issues with like ADA. You got to make sure all that stuff is compliant to have a county board meeting. Um, it's I, all in all, it's a, guess it's a good idea other than it'd be a we'd all have to make sure that we remember to show up at the same the right place after coming here for so many months years however long you've been on the board but um I guess I was just a little surprised to see that it still had that part in it not that it's necessarily a bad thing but just it was just a little bit surprising to me that it still had it and I mean it is just a recommendation it doesn't say we're going to I realize but yep uh Mr. Price I want to point out that, that yeah. the recommendation doesn't uh, doesn't say that. The recommendation is what's on 
the first pages. That's it. Okay? Yeah. The, the yeah. parts from the report were included because that's what it's referring to. Basically, I call that out of, out of what's there because I think it's something we can do at this time. We have no money, mm -hmm. you know? Um, some of those things were difficult to do, particularly with social media. That's a whole different thing. Right. And so this is, I think, the best we can do, which is to facilitate and cooperate primarily. And that's about it. It's a really minimalist approach. And you, yes, Mr. Norch. I think it's a good idea for the county to get their foot in the water and find our place, because this is, as a number of people pointed out, this can take a uh, coalition of a, of a, of a number of uh, municipalities, and it's good that we have our foot in the water now and move forward. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, I have a yes, Ms. Petrie. Please. Um, are we missing something on this? I go from page eight to page nine, but the beginning of page nine is no introduction, no memo, no nothing. Yeah, this is this is a section of the report. So this, this is a section of the report that just deals with oh, recommendations. Okay. Right, right. All right. There's about two pages missing. Yeah, and then this is the abbreviated recommendation. Okay, at this thank point. you for the clarification. Yes. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, thank you. Looks the eyes have it. Thank you. So the next section we have here is just a quick update on uh, monthly reports. Uh, looks like we are all in 2018 um, with all of the different departments here. Uh, the Animal Control Report, February 2018, Emergency Management Agency, March 2018, Head Start, March 2018, Probation and Court Services, February 2018, Public Defender, February 2018, and the Veterans Assistance Commission, February 2018. And all those port reports are available on each department's webpage through the department's report page uh, listed there. Um, there is no other business chair and uh, chair's report. I do not have anything to, to land there. And uh, I guess we don't have anything for designation of, or would, because we had a, yeah, okay, thank you. That's it. All right, thank you, Mr. King. Next up is policy personnel appointments, Mr. Rosales. <clears throat> okay, uh, the next item is A1, which is fire protection districts. Uh, how do you want to do this, Pius? You want, to, want me to read the, the, the township and you read the name? Okay, great. Not a, and not okay, a I would move that the, we appoint uh, to the following people to fire protection districts. Uh, uh, each has one term from May 1, 2018 to April 30th, 2021. Uh, for Broadlands, Longview, David Bosch. Eastern Prairie, Steve Lemke. Edge Scott, Linda Barkas. Ivedale, John Flavin. Ludlow, Patrick Quinlan, Ogden Royal, Tyler Wright, Pesodum, Chris Hausman, Philo, Michael McHenry, Sidoris, Richard Job, Sanguine Valley, Douglas Enos, Scott, Paul Burnham, Burbaum, uh, St. Joseph Stanton, Richard Dennert, Thomasboro, Michael Tittle, Tolono, Dennis Davis, Windsor Park, David Dupree. Great. Item number. Move the second and yeah. vote. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Any questions? Uh, Motion passes. I'll do that. And uh, the next one is the Fountainhead Drainage District for one unexpired term ending uh, uh, August 31st, 2018. Uh, I now made Gerald Reefsteck. Okay, uh, we have a fir uh, motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any questions? Motion passes. And the next item is Penfield Water District for one unexpired term ending May 31st, 2019. I nominate or I, I um, move to uh, appoint Elizabeth Cropper. Okay, we have a first and a second. Um, what was that? Questions first. <laughs> Questions first, yeah. Questions. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The motion passes. Okay, the sheriff has two proclamations. That's item B, proclamation designating the week of May 6th 
That's National Correctional Officers Week. Okay, moved by Rector, second by King. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Proclamation passes. Okay, proclamation designating the week of May 13th as National Police Week. Can I get a motion on that? Okay, moved by McGuire. Second by Harper. Uh, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. County clerk's report is to be placed on file. County administrator's monthly report is to be also placed on file. Uh, there is no other business. Uh, chair's report, term expiring May 31st, is for information only, is on top of your desk. And uh, items to be placed on the consent agenda is B1 and B2. Uh, also, all the appointments, A1, 2, and 3. Okay, items are A1, 2, and 3. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rosales. Next up is finance. Ms. Fortano. Uh, first up, we have a budget amendment or transfer, um, budget amendment 18-00010, fund 080, general corporate um, department 077, zoning and enforcement, increase, increased appropriations of $8,100, increased revenue, none from the fund balance. The reason is to re-encumber funds approved in 2017 uh, for demolition of the structure at 504 South Dotson Drive, Urbana, in May 2018. Mr. Esri, uh, Mr. Goss is a second. Any questions? Mr. Esri. Yeah, this, we approved this last year. It was hoped that he, the contractor would get this done actually in the year of 2017, both calendar year and obviously fiscal year, but it didn't happen, but he, this contractor's still within the time frame given, so it's not like he, gotten delayed or anything, provided that it gets done, I believe, yet this month. Or, well, I think maybe even even has up until May, so, if I remember right. So it's not like it's late. It was hoping, though, that he would have got it done, if I'm remembering correctly, last year, but it didn't happen. That is also my recollection. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, budget Amendment 18-00012, Fund 083, County Highway, Department 060 Highway. Uh, this is an increased appropriations of $900,000, a significant one. Increased revenue, none is from the fund balance. And the reason for this, these are the road improvements uh, for CH25 Staley Road for approximately 2.8 miles in 2017 Highway Department received funds from Ameren, Illinois for damages to county highways, including CH25. The Highway Department is requesting to use the funds received for CH25, Section 18-0044800-RS. Do I have a motion? Ms. Coward, and a second. Um, comments, questions? Patsy. Um, may I direct my question to Ms. Coward as chair of that committee? Yes. Um, the 900000 uh, is that sufficient to cover the whole job, or will there be cause to come back and ask for some more money for this job? <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> I thought uh, that city in California had, a, no, Arizona had eliminate highway engineers. No, we don't need to do that, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, the reason this is on as an amendment is because we received the money in August of last year. Mm -hmm. um, we needed to do cost estimates and, and plans to figure out how much it was going to cost to uh, do this daily road project. We've done those. The estimate is around 860000 um, so, barring good bids, 900000 should. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Rector. Is that from Staley Road, or from Monticello Road going north, is that correct? Yes, it, it, we, uh, our jurisdiction is from Curtis Road 
down to Monticello Road from Curtis Road on north is City of Champaign. It'll be a hot in place recycle of the uh, top layer and then new asphalt on top of that. And we're, we're trying to get ahead of all the development out there at the uh, Carlplex. So who has jurisdiction north of Curtis on Staley? Because that's a mess. City of Champaign. OK, I'll talk to them. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the, what they did, the temporary thing for the entrance yeah. to Carl at the Fields on uh, Staley is horrible. So thank you. You bet. Gosh. Yeah, Jeff, I assume this won't be a 80,000 pound road yet. Oh, yeah, it will be. It will be an 80,000 yes. pound road. Definitely. It must be from there north that's not 80,000 pounds somewhere. I don't know what the city, uh, I mean. Because grain trucks can't really use that route, so. Only because the city can't allow them because 80,000 pounds is state statute now. So every roadway in the state of Illinois, regardless whether it's got an inch of oil and chip or four feet of asphalt on it is by statute an 80,000 pound truck route. Any other questions, comments? Yes, Harrison. I just kind of generally, what happened exactly that Ameren did to cause the damage? Well, they were doing the Rivers Project where they put in the uh, High Line going over towards Sydney and they brought in all of their uh, their big poles and their equipment and their concrete to do the project. And all the roadways that they touched in Champaign County, we had a road use agreement on them. So basically, we did a survey of the roadways prior to them coming in. We did a survey of the roadways after. And based on the information in our pavement management system, they wrote us a check for a million and forty thousand dollars for damages to roads. Um, driving up and down the road, it doesn't look particularly damaged, um, but it's when you do the uh, the pavement condition index, I mean the cracking and the and the rutting, the things that happen to the roadways is what we were basing it on. It's not like it's totally falling apart, but we want to get it done before we get to that point. Um, as as far as like billing Amber, I mean, is that something that is that, is that uh, part of the agreement going into it that? whatever you guys determine they have to pay or is there a negotiation process like how does that work um, well there was a road use agreement going in uh, where they hired an engineer to do a, uh, a survey of the roadways and we have our own survey of the roadways so we had something to you know kind of match that to and the agreement was that any um, deterioration that they caused on the roadways they would pay for bringing the roadway back up to its current condition um, so I was leery when I sent them a bill for a million and forty thousand dollars, but they paid it, so I wasn't going to argue with that. That's for sure. Thanks, Mr. King. Uh, uh, just a quick question: You mentioned the pavement index. Uh, it, did you all do a study, or was was there something specific, or was it more of an estimate comparison type thing? No, it's actually uh, they have vans and trucks where the vans go up and down the road with a camera on the back on the front pointing both ways left and right and they also have a um, tr we have a truck we don't but the consultant that we hire has a truck that actually measures the deflections of the roadways so that gives you the strength of the roadway so all that information kind of all put together gives you a, a payment condition index thank you yes any other questions Thank you very much. I feel like I, I just learned a lot. This is a really interesting conversation. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? OK. Next up. Uh, next, we're going to go into closed session. Mr. Patterson has the honor of reading the uh, motion. Motion to enter into closed session pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C11 to consider litigation which is pending against or on behalf of Champaign County and litigation that is probable or imminent against Champaign County and that the following parties remain present, County Legal Counsel, uh, County Treasurer, County Auditor, rec and Recording Secretary, as well as Ms. Ogden and Mr. Anderson. Is there a second? Mr. King, uh, roll call please. Patterson. Here. Petrie? Yes. Rector? Yes. Rosales? Yes. Store? Yes. Summers? Yes. Tinsley? Yes. Weibel? Yes. Anderson? Yes. 
Clemens? Yes. Clifford? Yes. Cowart? Yes. Esri? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Hartke? Yes. King? Yes. Marsh? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Furtado? Yes. Uh, motion passes, and we'll go into closed session in the next room. Okay. No, just say there's no, there will be no action. Okay, uh, we're back into closed session. Let me do a quick quorum count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. We have a we have a majority, so we're back in session. Ms. Fortado. Um, so first of all, as you see, you have an addendum, uh, budget amendment transfers, um, number three, and based on what just happened in the closed session, my understanding is we do not need to address this at this time. Is everybody in agreement? Okay. But, okay. So then moving back to the regular agenda, we are now at the Board of Review. You could find that annual report on page 35. And next, we're going to hear from our treasurer, who has several items for us this, this beautiful evening. All right, first, let's uh, go ahead and look at the cash flow. As of April 1, I'll make this a little larger here so we can, oops. So looking at March, you see we began the month of March at $437,000. We had three payrolls during the month of March. Again, this is only for the general corporate fund, um, $2.5 million in those uh, payrolls. Uh, AP of about $2.5 uh, million. We did take the $1 million public safety sales tax loan. Uh, we did that uh, right after your board meeting on the 27th. We did that on the 28th. Um, revenues for the month of March were uh, a little higher than they were in February and January, but that includes the $1 million. So, uh, but it still was a little higher. Uh, ending cash balance of $368,000. As you look towards April, then, when we project out with our averages over the last five years, you see that uh, you know, our beginning balance, ending balance shows us still in the negative, and that's a very real possibility. We do still have a half a million dollars in uh, the Public Safety Sales Tax Authority. Um, remember, that money will get paid back later in the year, most likely after the September distribution of real estate taxes. We do anticipate real estate taxes to start rolling in during the month of May. Uh, real estate tax bills will be printed on April 30th, and so they should be arriving in constituents' mailboxes uh, right around the 1st of May. Uh, those will be due on June 1st and September 4th of this year. Our next three payroll month is in August. And as you can see, as we project on through, um, the general fund balance does build up as we go through the year. Uh, of course, those numbers are based on averages, so things will change throughout the year. Um, I also wanted to show you, because we talked about this at your last meeting, the payroll revolving loan. That was $115,000. We needed that to cover for one day until deposits were able to cover that. So that has been paid back. So right now, the, the home does not owe anything on that revolving loan. It's available should they need it at one of their payrolls between now and November 30th. Um, the other item I wanted to show you is just uh, so you have a picture of all of the loans. Uh, since we were dealing with them, this just shows you here where that 115000 and then the 94038 that was approved to cover those uh, I think it was about a half dozen vendors that needed payment at your last meeting. Uh, so that shows you their outstanding amount is this $1,365,000 amount. And that covers loans starting here in December of 2016 uh, through the payroll loan of uh, last month. Does anyone have any questions about any of those things? 
Ms. Petrie. Thank you. Um, what would be the reasonableness of the county uh, taking into consideration of bonding out what bonds we would have available to us to use to pay down uh, these owed bills on the nursing home, which would take care of not being charged interest on some of them and just have a lower interest on the bonds to um, get ourselves out of the present situation that we're in. We could use well, tax this anticipation is the, warrants to cover those bonds or what? This is the first time I've heard of this idea, so I really am not prepared to answer that. Uh, in all honesty, that's the type of thing that should probably come from your county administrator for the best recommendation. We just implement whatever they recommend. Okay, then um, can I put in a request to our county treasurer and county auditor and our administrator is not back yet, uh, that um, to help all of us have a better total picture of what we are uh, moving forward in some of these expenses. And I read a guest editorial in the News Gazette on Sunday, which laid out things, um, uh, the finances that we are co coping with, and uh, we need to maybe get it all laid out for us so we could see some of it and even look at uh, one or two scenarios if we borrow this much or that mm -hmm. much or what, however it plays itself out, but we're going, we're moving into some really, really tough decisions, not I, just I, the, I would agree, and I will talk with Ms. Busey and, and Ms. Ogden, and... Uh, Sorry, I should have yeah. met Ms. Ogden when yep, I mentioned absolutely, people. Absolutely, but that's... My apologies. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much mm -hmm. for taking that suggestion. Sure. Mr. Goss. Yeah, John, can you pull back up the uh, county cash flow? Sure. Where do you show the payback of the sales, the public safety sales tax? You know what? I do not think I put that on there because we don't know exactly, but most likely it'll be September, late September, early October. Okay. Did so that'll that'll take a, a million dollars off of the total there, so right around October. And would we have to pay roughly for interest on that, 3%? You don't. We don't you don't pay, pay interest because it's within our funds. But within us, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was my only question. Thank you. Any other? That means you're done and you get to go home. I wish. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Um, so I believe next, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, we are to the resolution part. So we have... Uh, under the treasurer number three, resolution authorizing the county board chair to assign mobile home tax sales certificate of purchase permanent uh, parcel 30-056-0105. Did you want to say anything about this? Or? The, the, oh, wait, all, to... all these, oh yeah, I have, Sorry, ahead. I have to mo move it first. A motion, Mr. Esri, Mr. Goss, a second. So right the, these items are all, uh, uh, mobile homes or there's uh, one uh, real estate parcel uh, that have had delinquent taxes, they've gone through the tax sale process, they've ended up in the hands of the trustee. Uh, there's no controversy about any of them. Uh, the one that is a uh, actual real estate, not a mobile home, the, the mobile homes are just selling off vacant mobile homes. It's a good deal, it's off the county's books, good deal. Uh, the one that is a, uh, uh, an actual piece of real estate property uh, that is a situation where the taxpayer made arrangements with the trustee, uh, or with the agent, I should say, uh, to make payments on that and uh, has defaulted in those payments. So this is basically putting it back into the uh, uh, scavenger sale process. Thank you. And that, that one you're referring to will be number five when we get to that item. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution authorizing disbursement of funds on defaulted contract for mobile home tax sale permanent parcel 15-025-0736. Do I have a motion? Mr. Summers. Uh, Mr. King is a second. Um, 
Any comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Resolution authorizing disbursement of funds on defaulted contract for real estate tax sale permanent parcel 21-34333430013. Do I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Anderson, a second. Mr. Goss, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution authorizing the county board chair to assign mobile home tax sale certificate of purchase permanent parcel 30-05900. Oh, four. Do I have a motion, Mr. Esri? Do I have a second, Mr. Anderson? Any questions or comments? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Um, and also thank you for your the the way that you explain that the. The, the rolling uh, nursing home loan and how promptly you let us know what was going on. I appreciated that a great deal. Um, next up, we have the auditor and our next report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as you know, last month, my a uh, traditional report that I had been giving is now moved to the full county board. Ms. Busey will be giving that. However, um, we do have all of our monthly reports on the uh, website, and they are available. And then if I may, one last note, um, you will see these are purchases not following policy. I have a voucher for every one of them. Um, just a heads up that um, a big portion are, of them are from uh, 2016 paying some of the nursing home. There's a lot of 2017s. So once again, we're finishing up last year, and so if anybody has any questions about that, which will be on your next agenda, please let me know. Ms. Petrie. Uh, speaking of nursing home again, um, can you update us on the status of the census at the nursing home or as current as you have available? Mr. Weibel. Uh, I believe yesterday it's 141. It's come up a few lately. We got, it got as high as 143, but now it's at 141 right now. Mm -hmm. I uh, have the breakdown if anybody's interested okay. in that. Mr. McGuire. Can you tell us how many are pending med Medicaid applications? I 40. Think it's like 39, list. I think. Oh. Just, just under 40. Okay, and uh, pending a Medicaid application means that they're not actually paying, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that's correct. Yeah. I, I do have a spreadsheet, and we do have that information, or I'm sure you can ask the nursing home or the nursing home board, and they can also relay that to you also. Uh, Mr. Storr. Thank you. Uh, could yes, sir. Could you hold, you said that there's a bunch of. These, these are all from the prior year, so when you get your purchases not following policy report for the next uh, board, I know there'll be a lot of questions. I have those ready for you in advance to look to at, but they're all 17s and 16 payments that were done in 18. Yes, sir. That's a rather large stack. And uh, how many would you say that? How many of those do you purchases do you think that are in that? I th well, there's quite a few. There's uh, two and a half pages in small print, but this is pretty typical. Um, because actually a lot of vendors, um, we have statements that are maybe issued and we haven't received the goods or services and therefore we pay them the following year um, because, you know, November and December are so close to January and February, a um, little bit of March. And then, of course, as you know, we always tend to have the nursing home year because they're always paying back um, bills that they owe. So that will be here. Uh, one of them... Um, that has got uh, several, are like Heil Royster, which is with the sheriff's office. There were some things that they were doing for them, and attorneys tend to not bill right away either sometimes, depending on what they're doing for the case. So those are the type of issues that tend to come up uh, after the fact, and just unfortunately, we close the year end out, and these are just from last year. But they're all approved. Okay, so I, that's some clarification for me. So that stack is a copy for each of us, not one just one big stack. No, that's just one big stack that, is, that okay. matches the list that you're getting. I see. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, that's uh, thank you for that, Miss Petrie. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, two questions again. 
uh, to help me better, better understand if there's potentials of money uh, in the future for the nursing home. One is related to the class action suit on mm -hmm. Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's possible, but I'm interested in uh, what is the basic timeline for something to go through the courts like that, and what is the potential uh, range of money that could possibly come to our county, or if there is any. Mm -hmm. And the second is the bad debt collection that is going on at the nursing home. The last time I asked that question, uh, th there had been none collected, if I'm remembering, and the projection was if any was collected, it'd be maybe about 10%. What I don't remember is what is the total amount of bad debt. Mm -hmm. So if you could just provide that sometime, okay. it would be great. Thank yeah, you. Because I'm not sure of some of the other answers to the first parts of your question. I would think Ms. Busey maybe and Mr. Anderson may be more qualified to answer some of those questions. I, I can say for the first question, we really don't know at this stage the game. It's largely up to what the state does too. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the court mandated the state does certain things and they have to do that, and if they do that, fine, but then what happens after that? At this so. point, too, um, uh, I know that uh, my chief deputy auditor, um, Ms. Ramsey, and also Mr. Anderson are working on an amount that are not necessarily collectible, and that would probably answer the second part of your question of what needs to be collected, um, but that dollar amount hasn't been determined at this time. I have a clarification question. Uh, so the courts uh, say this needs to be paid, but if the state doesn't have the money to do it, then it doesn't get paid. Is well, that accurate? Well, yeah, that's the big question. Or okay. will they try to delay it? And who knows? Would you agree, Ms. Reitz? Thank you. Mr. It's Goss. Yeah, just a point of clarification. We talk about bad AR. Have they written that off their books yet? Not at this time, sir. Okay, what's the plan for that? We were told by auditors that should be done sooner rather than later. Yeah. If you're going to speak, Mr. Anderson, Here. you got to use the microphone some, somehow. Mr. An Anderson is alluding to my previous statement stating that Mrs. Ramsey and he are working on what that dollar amount should be um, in coinciding with what the auditor suggested. It will be a fairly large amount, it's my understanding, but I'm not sure how much. Yeah, that's. I mean, that was suggested a long time ago when we got the audit, so I mean, we're, we're now a quarter in and we've still not come up with a number. I'd like to see that number as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Um, I saw Mr. McGuire first and then. Well, it sounds kind of like the state um, deciding on this lawsuit that the auditor determines how much we should write off, and then we decide ourselves then how much we should write off. And the state's also supposed to have a balanced budget too, and that never happens either. So hopefully we'll get our um, audit mm -hmm. correct, and these numbers will be correct for the nursing home. Thank you. I do know with our system, we just closed out year end just a week ago. Um, Mr. Weibel. I know in the past we've written off some data. I was wondering if you could perhaps do a history search, find out uh, when and how much. I mean, Ms. Bonnie would know, oh, okay. uh, have a little more history on that. I, I can just chime in institutional knowledge. The bad debt budget at the nursing home has consistently been $200,000 a year. No, I'm asking what have we written off in the past? No more than $200,000. Okay, I thought it was 300, but okay. Just, just because I know the process, since having been through several audits, um, the outside auditors and Ms. Ramsey will be applying the bad debt number that you're asking about uh, over the next several weeks. The outside auditors actually come here in May, and that's when they will actually apply those things. So you should be able to get those numbers, I'd say, by your May board meeting. That's helpful. Uh, any other... Mr. McGuire. Is this suggested number or surprise or secret? I mean, what is it? Is it around $2 million or something like that? Okay. Okay. 
Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Next up, we have a five-year financial forecast of the general corporate and public safety sales tax funds by Ms. Ogden. And I should say this is in your yellow packet. It's hard to believe it's that time again already. Feels like we just finished the budget. <clears throat> The five-year financial forecast um, predominantly will focus on the general fund and the public safety sales tax fund for fiscal year 2018, the current fiscal year, and the next four fiscal years uh, through 2022. The purpose of the forecast is to provide a framework for financial decision making and planning, uh, particularly as we move into the fiscal year 2019 budget process. And uh, I just want to point out that uh, the forecast uh, seeks to identify trends in revenues and expenditures rather than specific or hard numbers. So you will see some fund balance projections and obviously projected revenues and expenditures, but those are basically there for um, informational purposes. The, the real purpose of the forecast is to identify trends in revenues and expenditures. And one thing that you will not, um, that I did not incorporate into the forecast because uh, there are so many unknowns is the uh, continued operation or disposition of the nursing home. Although it is very evident that um, either the operation or disposition of the home will have an impact on the general fund. I do, however, in the fund balance portion of the presentation, remind the county board what the impact is if the loans that are outstanding and due in 2018 are forgiven. And I know that uh, Mr. Farney presented some information earlier that included um, the outstanding loan balances. The actual loans that are recorded on the balance sheet uh, for the nursing home and the general fund are $726,802. Those are the initial boiler loan that um, was extended last year and is due in September of 2018. And that amount um, was initially $282,000. It was reduced by $56,000 because of a refund that the county received from DCEO. So that outstanding amount for that loan is $226,802. In December of 2018, the two $250,000 loans that were made for um, payroll and vendor payments to the nursing home are due. And so the total of the loans that are recorded on the balance sheet is $726,802. The other figures that were provided by Mr. Farney um, also included the debt service amounts that were not reimbursed by the nursing home in 2016 and 2017. I do want to mention that you are aware, obviously, that the county does not have a modern financial system. Uh, we also do not have forecasting software. So this forecast has been prepared in a similar manner as our budgets, which is through Excel spreadsheets. In July of 2017, the county received a ratings call from Moody's um, after several phone calls between administration and um, Moody's. We did have our AA2 rating affirmed by Moody's. However, there was a downgrade in our outlook. Previously, the county had no outlook and um, Moody's downgraded our outlook to negative. They specifically cited, and I, this is um, in quotations, that this negative outlook reflects the expectation that without material changes to operating revenues or expenditures, continued support of the county nursing home will likely continue to weaken the county's reserve position, which is our fund balance, placing downward pressure on the rating. We have not um, received an inquiry from Moody's, although in April of 2017, the county did receive its first issuer comment from Moody's. 
And that was uh, a new process that Moody's implemented in 2016 for infrequent issuers. So the county has not issued new debt in quite some time. We have had some refundings, although the last two refundings were private placements. So they did not um, requi require a uh, ratings review. Um, I would not be surprised if we do not receive communication from Moody's in the next few months, either for issuer comment or, um, again, just to see where the county is in regards to um, its decision on the home. One of the things that Mr. Snyder and I discussed at length with Moody's last year was the county's um, efforts to try to um, bring some stability to the nursing home, whether that be through the sale or through some other plan for sustainability. I will mention that uh, Moody's did say the county's strengths were a diverse tax base and also modest debt burden. And some of the challenges that were identified were obviously the enterprise risk associated with the nursing home and anticipated draws on county reserves, and also exposure to the state for operating revenues. This, the consumer price index for revenue year 2018 for property taxes that will be collected in fiscal year 2019 is 2.1 percent. So this is the number that the county will use, and it's allowed um, levy growth under the property tax extension limitation law. This is a, a pretty healthy number. This is also the number um, for revenue, revenue year 2017 for property taxes that we will collect this year. The uh, fiscal year prior to that, I believe the CPI was 0.7, and the year before that was 0.8. So again, this is uh, uh, will allow for uh, strong growth in the county's property tax levy. Uh, unemployment rates in Champaign County are down 4.9% from December of 2016 to 3.9% in December of 2017, and the December of 2017 number mirrors the national rate. However, the state's unemployment rate is a much higher 4.7%. And one of the things that Moody's identified um, on the state of Illinois, uh, I'm sorry, not the, Moody's uh, state analysis is that fiscal problems uh, related to the state of Illinois and weak demographic profile cast doubt on the forecasts for state and local governments. Um, Illinois has lost population for the fourth consecutive year in a row, and that also translates to a loss of income, not just for the state, but also local governments who receive income taxes. Many of the financial challenges that the county is facing are the same challenges that were presented last year during the financial forecast. Um, obviously, the state we've already talked about. Uh, as the state tries to balance its budget, it continues to push down um, some of the issues that it's experiencing onto local governments. We saw in 2017 the 10% cut to income tax, which will affect the first six months of 2018. Um, also, there have been significant and increasing diversions and personal property replacement taxes, which then translates to fewer dollars being distributed to local governments. Also, the state implemented a collection fee last year, which was a 2% fee that applied to the state's, or I mean, to the county's um, public safety sales taxes. We also saw um, cuts to motor fuel tax in this fiscal year because the state transferred a significant amount of funds that were expenditures that were being paid out of their general fund over to their transportation fund, thereby reducing the amount of dollars that were distributed to um, motor fuel tax collecting entities. One of the things that um, I'll just briefly touch on is that I know over the past several years there have been um, several pieces of legislation associated with property tax reform. I know there are a few pieces out there right now. Um, and so one of the things that was proposed last year uh, was an increase in exemptions. And analysis of that is 
in my opinion, will not have a big impact on the county's revenues because it merely shifts the tax burden over to other taxpayers. So an increase in a homestead exemption or a senior exemption will just shift the tax burden over to other taxpayers that don't qualify for those exem exemptions, such as rental properties or farmland and businesses. However, and I haven't seen this legislation proposed this year, but I did see last year where there was um, discussion of implementation of new exemptions, such as a long-time residency exemption. And those, um, in particular, would potentially require the county to hire more staff to be able to verify the exemption eligibility. So that is something I know that the Supervisor of Assessments Office was concerned about last year. Um, everyone is aware of the underfunding of facilities maintenance. The facility condition report that was prepared in late 2015 identified that the county should be putting in about four and a half to five and a half million dollars annually in its facilities. The general fund allocates $532,261 every year uh, for our facilities, so we are significantly underfunding the facilities. Um, in 2018, the highway department did implement a capital budget, and so they are putting $100,000 uh, into that, that fund for improvements that are necessary at their facilities. And also technology. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the county is still working off of our legacy AS400. We are in dire need of a modern financial system and human resources system. Uh, we also are in need of a tax cycle system. And uh, there are some updates and uh, maintenance requirements for software that is provided for jail management and in our court system as well. I'll talk a little bit more about those a little later on. This is a chart that was, uh, looks very similar to the one that you saw last year, which is basically forecasted growth and expenditures exceeding revenue growth. The, in order to balance the general fund, it is essential for the county to use current revenues to guide our spending. We do not have uh, the means to generate new revenues. Um, I know this fiscal year we did implement the civic contribution fee for our municipal electric aggregation program. So that is a new revenue source for 2018. However, um, we're extremely limited to uh, improving our general fund revenues. And um, we have a limited ability to increase those revenue streams. So what has happened historically is that through the budget process, department heads and elected officials work with administration um, to balance the budget as they did for the current fiscal year. Some of the ways that we've been doing that is deferring capital needs um, and technology upgrades. Also restraining commodities and services spending. Some of our special revenue funds have personnel in them and some of our special, special revenue funds are also uh, transferring funds to the general fund in order to help close revenue to expenditure deficits. Our Labor Management Health Insurance Committee uh, has actively worked over the past several years to negotiate favorable increases for the county's health insurance premiums, and it'll be essential for that committee to work again this year uh, so that we are able to afford the increases for health insurance. And also, employees have been taking on a larger portion of their health, insur health insurance payments. The FOP contracts that were recently negotiated include 12% um, contribution of employees to their health insurance, and next year there's a 14% contribution. And the non-bargaining employee recommendation usually is also in line with the FOP contracts. As I mentioned earlier, the county uh, should be able to rely on healthy property tax revenue growth. Uh, about 34% of the county's revenues come from local taxes. And uh, generally, this growth that uh, is allowed under the property tax extension limitation law 
which as I mentioned earlier is 2.1% uh, for revenue year 2018, fiscal year 2019, and also growth that's allowed under a new property that's added to the tax rolls. I will mention while I'm here, and there's the report that I have provided is much more comprehensive than this overview that I'm giving, so uh, feel free to dive into that, and if you have any questions, please let me know. But um, one of the things that I just wanna make sure that everyone uh, keeps in the back of their mind is the uh, hospital property tax exemption case. I know we've talked a bit about this a little bit, and the county's liability in the event of an unfavorable ruling is around $2.6 million. Now that's all of the county's levy funds, not just the general fund. And we have a little less than a million dollars in reserve for um, offsetting this liability. On the flip side of that, if there were to be a favorable ruling, there's a potential for the county to be able to capture that new growth revenue in its property tax levy, and that amount could be reoccurring revenue of nearly a million dollars. The, forecla the forecast assumes modest growth in sales tax revenue. Um, the quarter cent is forecasted at 1.4% and one cent is forecasted at 1.5%. You've seen this chart uh, at the end of last, or actually I think just a couple of months ago, where I pointed out that there was significant growth in the county's one cent sales tax in fiscal year 2017. Um, again, because of the reciprocal agreement we have with IDOR, we are able to look at the data for 2017, however, not the prior two fiscal years, so I can't really provide any justification for the significant increase. However, I would like to point out that of the county's top 10 taxpayers, half of those, uh, I'm sorry, half of the one cent sales tax revenues come from the county's top 10 taxpayers. So the loss of one of those taxpayers in the event of an annexation or a business closing could have a significant impact on this revenue stream. I know that this is difficult to read and I don't expect you to read it, but what I wanna do is make a point here in regards to the personal property replacement tax revenues. We saw extreme volatility in PPRT revenues last year, also in income tax revenues. Part of that was due to the uh, implementation of new accounting software by the Illinois Department of Revenue. And part of it was also corrections to allocations that were historically made to income tax and PPRT tax that were incorrect, so IDOR sought to, to correct those misallocations. But the point of this chart is to uh, help you understand that the state's uh, way that it is addressing some of its budget deficiencies is to continue to divert funds from local governments. So you can see in the very, the second column, fiscal year 2009, there was a diversion of about 21.6 million in PPRT revenues prior to the distribution of those funds to other local governments. And then moving all the way up to fiscal year 2018, you can see we're at $297 million in diversions to other entities prior to the distribution of the remainder of those funds to local governments. I know in the uh, governor's budget address for fiscal year 2019, he did propose an extension of the um, diversion to Illinois Community Colleges, which is something I think the Illinois Municipal League had initially thought wouldn't happen. Last year, the legislature imp implemented a 10% cut to income tax, and that resulted in the loss of about $130,000 in county revenue in fiscal year 2017. That six, or six months of fiscal year 2018 will be impacted by that cut, and that's estimated to 
cost the county $180,000 in revenues. Uh, this was proposed as a, and approved as a one-time cut. However, during the governor's budget address, he proposed an extension of this cut. I have included the extension of that cut in this forecast. Um, I know Illinois Municipal League is also projecting that it's very likely for that to happen. So you can see that 2018 income tax revenues are down, and that's um, because the cut will apply to the entire fiscal year, and then will also apply if extended to the first six months of fiscal year 2019. During the fiscal year 2018 budget process, we talked about the decline in fees and forfeitures, uh, fines and for forfeitures, I'm sorry. And so here's a chart that shows um, that decline. In 2015, there was a decline of 8%, followed by 23% in 2016, followed by a 15% decline in 2017, and year to date for 2018, there's a 22% decline in revenue. And um, I know that Mr. Snyder had worked on this a uh, little bit with, I believe, the circuit clerk's office and uh, had identified that the result of these declines is because of criminal justice reform and changes to adjudication processes. We also discussed a decline in fees revenue. Uh, in 2017, fees revenues declined by $336,000, or 8.2%. And the largest fees that are collected in this category are not actually shown on this particular chart, but they are for um, recorder and circuit clerk fees. Uh, in discussions with the recorder's office, the number of documents recorded in 2017 was down. And um, also in discussions with the circuit clerk's office, um, over time, uh, the number of um, cases that uh, the fees are collected on uh, has been down since 2009. Um, well, this chart's 2010, actually, and doesn't include the circuit clerk's uh, fee revenues. However, in your report, The largest uh, sources of fee revenue for the circuit clerk's office are for chancery, law magistrate, small claims, and traffic cases. And for chancery and traffic cases, since 2009, the number of those cases are down 49% and 42% respectively. Most of the county's fees are actually set by legislation, so we have very little um, opportunity to um, make improvements in those areas. However, the public defender fee is set by the judiciary. And in your report, in your that's at your desk, there's a chart in it that shows a, a reduction or the reduced amount of fees collected for the public defender's office. Um, in 2018, the administration worked with the judiciary to try to implement a um, moderate fee that would have um, exceptions for persons with disabilities and those living on fixed income. And it was our understanding that they were going to be implementing that in 2018. That has not occurred. And it is uh, our understanding after reaching out to the judiciary that they have decided not to proceed with implementation of that nominal fee. So we do not expect that there will be any improvement in uh, that revenue source. Moving to the general fund expenditures. In 2017, 71% of total expenditures were for personnel costs, including wages and health and life insurance. In 2019, uh, the county will appropriate for the full amount of the newly created elected executive position. The county board set that salary at a little over $117,000. FOP contracts have been negotiated for fiscal year 2019 and uh, represent increases of between 1% and 2% with the exception of step increases. They're not included in, 
in the one and two percent. And then all of the AFSME contracts uh, will be negotiated beginning in 2019. Health insurance costs are extremely difficult to forecast. There are multiple factors that go into um, what those premiums are. And uh, what the county has historically been able to do is to manage those costs through the negotiations with its broker and the Labor Management Health Insurance Committee. Uh, also, we have had some plan changes and structure changes that have allowed the county to be able to afford the increase. However, uh, the, the increase in health insurance is a significant concern for the county. We did receive a favorable increase this year of 2.7%. However, last year our increase in premium was 11.6%, and that was um, the result of negotiations when the initial uh, amount quoted to the county was a 51% increase. And for those of you, I, I think everyone was here when we, uh, I, I don't think we've ha gotten any new board members since we approved the contract with Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, but the county did switch from Health Alliance to Blue Cross Blue Shield and from an HMO plan to a PPO plan for fiscal year 2018. Other expenditures in the general fund are commodities. 45% of the commodities ex expenditures are for the purchase of real estate transfer tax stamps. The recorder collects the tax through the sale of revenue stamps and then turns around and distributes two thirds of that amount to the state. So again, a significant portion of our commodities budget is for um, is sent off to the state of Illinois. Services represent 20% of general corporate fund expenditures, and for this fiscal year, we increased the sheriff's uh, medical, dental, and mental health appropriation by $100,000 in anticipation of significant increases for that contract. Um, the sheriff did issue an RFP for that contract, and um, the amount of the increase was 32% significantly more than what we had anticipated that it would be. In this fiscal year, it will cost between the Sheriff's Office and um, the Juvenile Detention Center, it will cost the county uh, $175,000 over and above what the contract was in 2016. Other expenditures uh, in the general fund are for capital. Um, that includes the squad, car, the sheriff's squad cars. For the last three fiscal years, the county has um, implemented cuts to the squad car replacement budget. This forecast does include restoring that budget to the 2015 level, which is $230,000. Also in the budget is funding for items that are currently scheduled for replacement in fiscal years 2019 and through fiscal year 2022. In 2019, uh, there is one item that is scheduled for replacement that um, is a significant cost to the county. It's about $84,000, and it is for the replace replacement of routing switches uh, for IPv6. And I am not a technology expert, but the county is currently operating on IP v4 which is version 4 and um, in discussions with mr rhodes um, the county will eventually need to move to ipv6 and again the the replacement of the routing switches is scheduled for 2019 however this would be a group um, effort that would include the cities and I think some other local entities. So the likelihood of whether or not that will happen in 2019 is still unknown, but this forecast does include funding $84,000 for that. Um, when we get closer into the budget, we can determine whether or not we can maybe partially fund that or pull that out and look to fund it next fiscal year. <clears throat> One of the things that the county uh, appropriated for in the current fiscal year was replacement of the uh, ERP, or the Financial and Human Resources uh, software. 
So as you know, we had $272,000 appropriated for that, half of that coming from the general fund and half of that coming from public safety sales tax fund. Um, we have not proceeded with uh, replacement of the ERP and, and discussions that the tax cycle group has been having. Um, we feel that it is important for the county to prioritize replacement of the tax cycle system. Every taxing entity in Champaign County relies on the county to facilitate and um, collect its tax revenues. So a failure of that system would not only impact Champaign County, but every taxing entity in Champaign County. So this forecast does include $195,000, which is a, an estimate at this point for initiation of the tax cycle system replacement in 2019, and in subsequent fiscal years, $165,000. And we will have more information about that during the budget process. However, the ERP um, is not included in the forecast for fiscal year 2019 through 2022 at this point, although it is uh, extremely essential for the county to identify funding for replacement of that system. This is a summary of um, the forecast detail that's included in your packet. And essentially, I want to focus on um, the fiscal year 2019 uh, projected revenues and expenditures. Again, I want to remind everyone these are projections. Um, it is really early in fiscal year 2018 for us to try to identify exactly how the end the year will end. We have um, you know, uh, potential for a significant draw on county resources for the nursing home. Um, also, the forecast information that I have prepared for you was based on only two months of revenues and expenditures for fiscal year 2018 because I did not have March uh, financials available until uh, late Friday afternoon. So based on the things that I've, I've been discussing, uh, fiscal year 2019 revenue to expenditure uh, projected deficit of $572,000. Uh, there is room for improvement in this number. Um, if the income tax cuts are not extended, that number can improve. Um, you know, if property tax revenues are uh, coming in better than what they're projected, that number can improve. So by the time we get to the middle of the year and we uh, have more details about the performance in 2018, then I will have more solid numbers, and as we build the budget, we'll have more solid numbers. But at this point, with the information that I have, we are anticipating a revenue to expenditure deficit of almost $600,000. And if the county were not to balance the 2018 or 19 budget, you can see that our fund balance would sit just under $4 million with a fund balance percentage of 10.5%. Um, obviously, the county is required to balance its budget, so we will make efforts to do that. But again, this is just a, a summary of, um, for your information, to identify trends and revenues and expenditures and what the impact of that would be to the county's fund balance if we do not uh, make efforts to balance the budget. The chart on the bottom shows the impact of the nursing home loans if they were to be forgiven uh, by the county. Again, um, the boiler loan is due in, two, in September and the cash loans are due in December. So in 2018, if the $726,000 were to be forgiven, it would be recorded as an expenditure on the county's books and it would um, end up with a, the projected fund balance would be just over $3.7 million, which translates to a 10.2% fund balance. And you can see how that carries through um, to fiscal year 2022. I stated earlier that the
So right now, looking at 2017, we're expected to have $81,000 in the fund. So no, that's the... That, that was the um, surplus that the county ended 2017 oh, okay. with, um, but uh, as we years, talked sorry. about last month, the, that was uh, transferred, all of that was transferred to the nursing home out of fund balance um, for 2018, essentially. So 2018, we're at negative 60,000. Um, um, conservatively, seems like we loan the nursing home $250,000 every month or so. This forecast does not uh, reflect the impact of any future subsidies to the nursing home, although the 94000 and actually the amount transferred, I think, was closer to $90,000. Um, that number is factored in for 2018. So $250,000 every couple of months, we're talking almost another million dollars. Negative. Before I move on to the public safety sales tax fund, were there any other questions on the general fund? The forecast does assume continuation of the 2% uh, fee that was imposed by the legislature, also, although there has been uh, legislation introduced to reduce that amount to 1%. Uh, the point of this chart is to show the county that the county board that 50% or nearly 50% of the county's public safety sales tax revenues go to make debt service payments on the county's four alternate revenue bonds. The county will retire one public safety sales tax bond in 2018. However, there will be no um, relief because the uh, principal payments on another one of our issues ensue in 2019. Public safety sales tax funds are also used to provide um, funding for programs, the Youth Assessment Center. The Youth Assessment Center receives 5% of the public safety sales tax revenues. Also, reentry programming and um, specialty courts and jail classification personnel are paid for with public safety sales tax funds. Uh, justice system technology is paid for with public safety sales tax funds, including the jail management and system and part of the court's technology system. And items that are in the capital asset replacement fund that qualify for public safety sales tax funding are also um, paid for through a transfer from the public safety sales tax fund to the capital asset replacement fund. Public safety facilities, utilities, and maintenance um, are also paid for from this fund as a transfer from uh, this fund to the general fund. And if you remember, for fiscal year 2018, we did uh, increase the amount of that transfer in order to offset the loss of the county revenue um, because the nursing home was unable to reimburse the county for the debt service. <clears throat> there will be some funds available with that uh, outside of paying for the items that I mentioned earlier that the county will need to um, allocate for some of the more significant needs of the county, um, predominantly technology and facilities investments. Um, I have been talking to the sheriff's office and the sheriff's office business software, which is currently on the AS400 is in need of replacement. Also jail management software, which is um, Tyler New World System, is in need of replacement. Uh, support for the current version is planned to be dropped in the near future. In fact, the county was initially told that uh, Tyler New World would no longer support 
the, the um, current version. However, they have since um, decided that they will continue to support it. However, there is no support for the graphical, inter graphical user interface. Um, when the county uh, updates its jail management software, a subsequent replacement uh, will also be required to update the JANO interface, which is the system that the courts use. Other technology that will be in need of replacement, however, um, oh, sorry. Okay. Um, can you explain what a uh, graphical user interface means? Did you hear me say earlier I was not a technology expert? So I, I think um, what it is is the ability to use icons rather than text um, to communicate with the computer. But again, that's really, oh, <laughs> yay. OK, I'm close. Uh, the other systems that will be in need of replacement in the near future will um, be joint ventures. So um, these will have to be planned with other uh, local entities, and those are replacement of the law enforcement records management system and also uh, METCAD dispatch software. The facility condition report that was completed by Bailey Edwards at, at the end of 2015 uh, identified several of the county's public safety facilities as either poor or fair. Um, you can see here under the poor category is the adult detention center, the sheriff's office, and correctional center, and also some of the garages. Um, the facility condition index of fair applied to the emergency operations center the Juvenile Detention Center, and the Coroner's Office. Some of the priority uh, repairs that were identified on those reports were for roofs, boilers, security systems, generators, chillers, and control systems. Um, the County Board also needs to be aware that we have not completed the ADA improvements at the downtown facility. Um, the Department of Justice has allowed the county to defer those discussions temporarily. However, per our agreement with them, we will resume those discussions starting in the Facilities Committee in July of this year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and make one other point. Um, regarding the ADA improvements. So the, estimate, the estimated cost of the improvements that are needed at the downtown jail are around $175,000. However, the county had uh, Bailey Edward update the facility report for those, um, the facilities that are downtown at the end of 2017. And the architect's estimated cost for maintenance that needs to occur if the county is going to stay in the downtown facility within the next five years is $2.9 million. And uh, within the, the five to 25 year period, the estimated costs for the maintenance of those facilities is $8.8 .8 million. So the county's next steps in terms of the 2019 budget process will be a budget process resolution that will come to the county board next month. And um, we will review the county's financial policies to see if there are any recommendations for changes to those policies. Also um, in June, administration will provide budget instructions to department heads and elected officials, followed by meetings with those departments in July and legislative budget hearings in August. Mr. Storr. Sorry. Uh, going back to uh, page 16 and the uh, ERP uh, that, that runs on the antique uh, mainframe computer, uh, could you elaborate a little further about uh, where that uh, 
you could you elaborate a little bit about what what plan there is currently in place to uh, replace that? I, I, I thought at one time that there was a plan, and now it, I'm not so sure that it sounds like that there is. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. You're, you're talking about the ERP system. Yes. Yes, there are funds in the 2018 budget for a basic software as a service contract. Um, based on preliminary quotes that Mr. Snyder had received, there's $272,000 budgeted for that. Um, at this time, we are not proceeding with that for a couple of reasons. Um, one being that the nursing home instability and just the not wanting to proceed with that. And two is um, the prioritization of the tax cycle system. Um, after further discussions with that group, we feel that it's a uh, more priority for replacement. Plus, the the scope um, and the cost of that replacement are, uh, you know, smaller than the ERP replacement. So we we potentially could use some of the funds that are appropriated in 2018 to uh, begin, you know, the early process of the tax cycle system replacement. But at this point, I think um, administration's position is that we need to be extremely cautious about proceeding with any kind of um, software replacement until the county determines what um, it will do in regards to the, the nursing home. Ms. Petrie. Well, first, um, thanks for the great job. I know Thank it you. takes a long time to put this together. And it's, Thanks to the others in our county who work on our finances. Second, I hope that your PowerPoint presentation will be put up on the county website as part of this evening's um, materials. Now to my comments. Um, toward the very beginning of your comment when you showed the chart up there that we really haven't improved this year over last year, and then I look at the numbers uh, that you put up there from page 17, the trun truncation of those numbers, and um, you didn't explain, and nobody asked, uh, the revenue to expenditure increase by 2022 is rather astounding. And you keep reminding us that you haven't folded into any of these numbers any um, projections in relationship to the nursing home. So my next comment is not a criticism. My next comment is that I look at these numbers and I really need help, even if it's on assumptions, what would happen or what is the meaning to the county in relationship if the nursing home stays within the county, especially when I look at these other numbers that we see here on on page 17. And I know they won't be dead on, I understand that. But I do think we need to have an understanding of what that means to the numbers, what it means to the county, what it means to finding money from other aspects within the county to counter those needs for the, the nursing home and, and um, it would be nice to have them yesterday because we're in this big process of movement on decisions. I'm not saying it needed to be yesterday, but we're moving along and in some ways we don't have a relatively uh, complex and full picture of what are the ramifications if we make decision A and decision B and decision C and we just, we're, we're doing it this way rather than what is going to be the big fallout. And part of the reason we're in the situation we're in with the nursing home is 10 years of the can being kicked down the road, I've said this before, and slices of decision making and putting it off and now we're in the situation we're presently in, which I would define as a crisis with the county and the board and their decision making process and uh, kicking the can down the road, it just makes things more dire for the, the county. And so 
if somehow we could get some of those additional numbers, um, I'm only speaking for myself, but it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So my comment to that is um, we did a little bit of that during the budget process last year when we identified um, where areas that the county could cut in order to provide subsidy to the nursing home. And basically that, I mean, the continued operation of the home is going to require uh, cuts from the general fund in order to be able to pay the outstanding accounts payable. And then if there are any other, you know, structural um, deficits associated with current revenue and uh, expenditure. Um, as, and if I remember right, for 2018, uh, that number looked like $1.4 million. And I think the financial position of the home has deteriorated even since then. So I, I, I understand where you're coming from. It's a moving target. Mr. McGuire. Thank you. Well, I don't know, I think Tammy's done a great job and I appreciate it like um, Patsy said. And that number probably is about $1.4 million. And to the, at 2018 projection, um, probably $2 million in a loss for 2019 if the nursing home is still available or still there in the budget. I don't think, I, I, don't, I can't see how it will be. Uh, we can't see how we can let the nurse, the county continue to do the mandated responsibilities of this county and still have the budget like that. Um, we're doing the same thing to the county that happened in the nursing home. It lost its capital budget, lost its reserve. Now it's suffering. We're not you know, giving good care. Now the county has lost its capital budget. You can look at this but this page, see it's losing its reserve. We're using the quarter cent now to, to buttress the reserve. Um, pretty soon this number gets up to, we lose almost $1.2 million. It'll probably be $3 million. We won't have a reserve and we'll wear away the, the quarter cent sales tax to pay for the nursing home and it'll be running the same way it's running right now, at a deficit with poor quality care. But we have an option. We can't just say no. We can't deny that. We can come up with these, but, these cuts, but we have to actually do something. We can't sit on our hands. We can ignore it. We have to talk about it. We have to do something. These are significant cuts. There'll be 20, 30, 40 people that will have to lay off in the county to save it. Thank you. Mr. Weibel. Uh, behind Mr. Goss and probably collecting electricity from his glow is a solar panel. Um, I know that there's uh, a bill in the assembly in Springfield that would basically put a value on property that has solar farms, and we're talking about having one in Champaign County. Do you have any speculation what any income we'd get from that, if any? So I haven't done a lot of research on that. I, I did look into that a month or two ago. Um, I know the piece of legislation that you were referring to um, would implement a uniform assessment, I think, so there would be equal opportunities amongst you know county, counties that are uh, looking to approve these solar farms. Um, and so the property would no longer be assessed as farmland uh, it would be assessed as more valuable. I don't know what how they'll end up doing that. So I, I think there could be a potential for there to be um, growth in property tax revenues for that, but I can't say to what extent it would be. Uh, Ms. Petrie. Oh. Um, 
I haven't read that legislation, so my question is, um, when the turbines went up, it, everybody thought that was the pot of gold until the state put in an offset on that, especially for funding schools. Is there anything like that already in this legislation on the, the solar farms? Because it's turned out that the turbines are not the, the pot of gold and many superintendents are saying, we wish we did, didn't have them. I just read the summary of the legislation and so I, I haven't read the entire legislation, but I, I don't know, but I, I, my understanding was that this was to create a uniform assessment, so I don't know that it's gone to the, the level of detail that you're referring to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much. Other business, I don't have any. Does anybody else? Chair's report, I don't have anything. Items to be designated to be placed on the consent agenda. Finance A1 and A2, and also finance C3, C4, C5, and C6. Thank you, Ms. Furtado. Uh, any other business? Seeing none, we're adjourned. Oh, Mr. Guire, do you have? That's Dr. Furtado. Oh. Is that new? No. Oh, oh, well. I only make people call me doctor. Certain people call me doctor. Mr. McGuire's on the list. <laughs> All right. We're adjourned. <laughs>